All right. Um, <laughs> my hair, I've been moving, I've been shredding leaves for an acre worth of lawn and um, I keep getting like sticks and stuff stuck in my hair and then it, it's all, it gets all um, wacky. But um, I'm just following up um, on uh, the phase conjugation question. So I was emailed um, Sir John Pendry's research on uh, metamaterials, and he has this, this great quote where he says, um, we're only limited by the strength of the reverse time signal. And that, that quote essentially sums up what, um, what alchemy really is. And, um, they, that paper was in 2008 and, and then he cites a, um, an earlier paper where they introduced the term radiationless transmission, something like that, radiationless signal. And um, they're talking about wireless transfer of power, relying on metamaterials in order to um, focus the signal in the core of the the magnet for magnetic conductance and so you don't have any loss of the signal strength and therefore you can have a longer a farther um signal transmission that's wireless and they're going to be using this for you know well, like wireless phone charging, but like wireless charging of electrical cars and stuff like that. Um, so then, um, Sir John Pendry, his latest research, or the latest I could find was like April this year, where he introduces this term, this analogy with the Archimedes screw and I had I used this analogy also like 15 years ago so it's somewhere and I wrote it wrote it down somewhere um, the Archimedes screw was used in Egypt to pump water so essentially it's just a a torque that you have at an angle and then as you turn it it, it pulls the water the opposite direction going up, up the screw. And so what they figured out is that if you use metamaterials to create a circular bandwidth of light, um, then you're able to extract a negative frequency of light. And then John Pendry with his research group, they say, well, due to the conservation of energy, this has to be converted into a, the negative frequency has to be converted into positive energy. So that would be like, um, wavelength or, um, it's light, so it's not it's not matter. It's not antimatter, but it is converted into photons. So this is this is this was already proven before, where they used um, they used a vibrating mirror. They like basically vibrated a, an electromagnetic field, like close to the speed of light, and they were able to capture. Um, they, that was essentially like a mirror, like a space-time mirror that was able to absorb virtual photons. 
So this, this proves the whole concept in meditation by turning the light around through meditation. You're creating a space-time mirror as a metamaterial so that you then you're amplifying the reverse time signal to then absorb the negative frequency. And then you convert that into increased light internally in your body. And then when you do this, you can then send the light back into other people non-locally. That's the, the other thing is that um, somebody else citing John Pendry then pro proved that the metamaterials are create a, a non-local field of energy around them. And then Sir John Penry says that, you know, the great thing about the, these metamaterials is you're no longer limited to the conservation of momentum because you're working, again, just with pure time and frequency. And this was my whole point also is that the, um, the De Broglie law of phase harmony violates the conservation of momentum. So they're literally st stating this in the paper, you know, because you're able to absorb the virtual photons and then translate it into increased uh, frequency. And then the other implication, of course, is that this creates a um, negative frequency. Um, they, they say that this has to change how black holes are interpreted. And so this, this goes back to um, Gerard de Hoof's eternal black hole, because he's, he's trying to explain that the, the wormhole the wormhole is created um, due to the time frequency non-commutativity as a a metamaterial, like a the 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 event horizon is the metamaterial for the singularity. So there's no there's no black hole in the singularity because you have entangled non-locality between the negative frequency and the positive frequency. But but his whole point is, is the same thing. What what Roger Penrose wasn't understanding, and I didn't understand this either, is that you know Gerard Duft is relying on Dirac to say that if you're an external observer from the future, then the past um, matter that's creating the black hole is actually from the negative frequency of the future it's entangled so it's it's then observed as having positive energy as a Dirac hole so it'd be antimatter but it but again since it's it's created from negative frequency which is virtual photons so the the matter um, the, the, I, it would be converted back into, um, into photons, you know, positive photons for the, um, he's talking about the microseconds of the vanishing of the black hole from the Hawking, the Hawking radiation as the black hole evaporates. So again, that would be, um, I guess it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be positrons, it would, it would be photons. So, um, the, so there's a, there's like a reverse time conversion of the matter back into photons through the negative frequency. And um, 
so that it gets it gets kind of unusual to think about it. Um, but again, if you realize that all matter is actually made of light anyway, then um, this is kind of a Ramana Maharshi's big point is you can you can let like he just let the physical body waste away because according to him, you know, it's just an illusion. So he's like always existing in that negative frequency state where he's, he's absorbing his mind is a, it's like the, the light is turned around so that it's then constantly absorbing negative frequencies and therefore the matter is seen as a as a increased energy of um, positive frequency, um, and th this also is the secret of the uh, golden light. So that when you when you meditate, the golden light is as a um, that that's the yang shen so it's the external observer so like our mind as thinking as the spiritual ego is actually still our external observation but when we when we listen at a as a meta material because it's the combination of listening and visualization that creates the meta material then we see blue light internally that is then absorbing the negative frequency as the emptiness and that we we inherently cannot see and that's what makes the the positive light more intense and brighter because you're you're increasing the number of photons and if you study the element gold the color gold is due to this de Broglie law of, of phase harmony as a relativistic quantum chemistry so that your the blue light is being absorbed but it's also absorbing the virtual photons and so therefore it's increasing the wavelength as a relativistic effect and that's what creates the gold you know, it's seen as, as a gold, golden light. And I did a blog post on that in a previous video. So, I, you know, I have to review all the science details. But the, the whole trippy part is that, you know, Gerard de Hooft or Gerard de Hooft is talking about the difference between internal observation and external and that's why um the non-commutative mathematics is as if your uh, internal um observation well you, you can never observe it you can just absorb absorb the negative frequencies um And they're and they're they're proving it's being absorbed because they're increasing the frequencies as positive energy of light. So it's going to be, you know, it'll be interesting to see what they're what they're going to do with this technology. And I suppose it's already a lot of it's used for the military. You know, it's turns into like top secret kind of stuff. Um. But it, of course, you know, graphene is then a meta material. That's what they showed with the graphene. That's what they're showing it has the non-local. They've proven it has non-local um, entanglement. Um, and of course, um, this is what um, Gunter Gunter Nimps proved with phonons that you could have these superluminal phonons based on the same principle where the the phase signal is coming it's going backwards in time against the group 
signal. And so, again, this is from De Broglie's Law of Phase Harmony, where he said the, um, the phase signal is the speed of light squared divided by the particle velocity. And the claim was, well, you can have this because it, it doesn't have any energy. But in fact, it does, it's not energy defined as amplitude, it's just defined as frequency. So therefore, the, the, um, the amplitude squared is what creates the particle in quantum physics. But um, it's then uncertain with the momentum. But Sir John Pendry is pointing out that if you're just relying on frequency and time, you can violate the conservation of momentum because it's before the creation of the particle as matter in as uncertainty with momentum. So as Louis de Broglie um, revealed, you know, the um, frequency is to time as the momentum is to wavelength for the particle. So this is just staying in the time and frequency and you can still, you can still have they have to call it force, a force, because technically it's not energy. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. And it's, it's just really exciting, exciting that they're corroborating all these claims that have already been figured out through um, meditation. Thanks.